3D platformers have always been one of my favorite video game genres. Whether it's a simple but fun LEGO game, the blitzing speeds and action of Sonic games, or the outlandish lesser known games like Tie, Attack, and Blinks the Time Sweeper. These have always been games I loved but I've unfortunately seen a bit of a decline in the last decade, especially with the genre as a whole. Yeah, Mario has been keeping on it for the longest, but I miss the old days where mascot platformers like those previously mentioned were around and now we only get like a gem or two. That is why today I'll be discussing three little games that are the closest that we have to that and that I've really been enjoying and making me wish for more. And if after a video this got you hot about 3D platformers, I'll be leaving a link below to a Twitter thread talking about some of the more promising 3D platformers coming out in 2020 and 2021, which are all pretty exciting. I haven't gotten the chance to check most of these out because I have a Mac, but I highly recommend you check some of these games out and support them all you can. They are super promising and deserve all the love they can get. Back to the topic at hand, I'm going to be talking about three great games I've been playing that should be talked about way more than they already are. Yes, I know most aren't underrated, but the more we talk about these games, hopefully the more likely we are to get any more games like these. PlayStation is definitely taking a step in the right direction in this, and I can't wait for whatever else they're going to be putting out in this genre. For each game, I'll be talking about gameplay, how the game feels to play and all that shit, levels and environments, how charming the worlds are, and how enjoyable it is to explore said levels, and some uh, last thoughts, maybe a rating, and why I recommend these games, even if you are or aren't a 3D platforming fan. Without further ado, let's get into it. I don't know about y'all, but I feel like we ain't talking about this game as much as we should be. This has to be one of the best 3D platformers not made by Nintendo of the decade. Honestly, man, this game plays so good. Yeah, yeah, okay, so this game plays real good and kinda smooth. We aren't bumping <laughs> your dumb baby brain into walls and shit. I've never felt a game like this that isn't a Nintendo game. Click the way this one did. Like, God damn, this is such a fun game to play. I've gone through this game twice and I've been happy each time I play through it. Like honestly, considering speedrunning this game, because it's so good to play. One big mechanic is swapping hats throughout the game. You'll be able to find various hats with their own distinct abilities like sprinting. Yeah, that's kind of the one you're going to be using 90% of the time. There are others of course, but those are mainly tied to puzzles or optional collectibles that honestly don't really matter, but they're still there if you want to get 100%. Yeah, most of these shits you'll find don't really matter, especially the yarns, because you'll get so many so naturally that the purpose of seeking these out are kind of time wasting. The coins are kind of cool, and the figures that you find you will be able to display back in your hub, which is neat, but yeah, that's about it. They're just neat. You also have badges, which will give you minor gameplay changes like a magnet to be able to pick up orbs from a distance, a hookshot to swing around some points of the levels, or a one hit badge if you really hate yourself for some reason and want that extra challenge. Combat ain't that great though, but I don't mind it. You got an umbrella that you can penguin people with and a few hop jump skips you can do on them, but whatever, who cares? You really ain't here to do that. You're here to collect timepieces and fucking zoom around levels like Sonic the Hedgehog if he was good. In that case, let's talk levels. Levels are pretty awesome, with a bunch of worlds to pick from, all with their own distinct characteristics, which is cool. My favorite for sure was a mountain village that was super open, and could zipline from village to village which was really cool, and even then each village was different, and eventually it gets to be infected with these purple plants and stuff. It looks really weird and the art style changes completely, and it looks really cool, <laughs> I'll be honest, it slaps. Levels are organized by getting these timepieces, which pretty much feels like Mario 64's level structure, you pick an objective and go for it. You might get distracted and find a new one and get that one instead and come back later for the one you were working on before. It also had a pretty cool metroidvania type structure, having you come back and forth from different worlds, using new hats that you find along the way and using them to find other timepieces or collectibles. But even then, there aren't many worlds to explore. And once you reach the final world, it's like, oh shit, we're, we're here already? Okay, damn, alright, that was quick. Yeah, there are many. You can probably count the amount of worlds in this game by the hand. But if you're lucky enough to play on PC, you'll be able to download a bunch of user-made mods, recreations of old levels, and a whole bunch of other cool stuff that you can check out. Sadly, I can't be able to do that because I only played it on PS4, but knowing the creativity we have out there, I can't even imagine what people made up with in this game. This game is amazing, and everyone should play it. It plays so well and surrounds you with such an incredible world with memorable characters. Go play and I couldn't recommend this game enough. 
for real, this game is like a 10 out of 10 with a little side of jank, but it's all good. It's honestly one of the most fun and wholesome games you could play right now. Speaking of fun and wholesome, this is an interesting one. Where I first started off as a knockoff conquer and a VR platformer, and then now it's a full 3D Microsoft mascot. The Lucky's Tail series ain't bad, kinda. Let me let me explain. Gameplay is as simple as you can get it. You run, jump, and spin on shit, collecting coins and collectibles along the way. You have to spin moves to fight enemies, and this cool burrow dig thing that lets you zoom around levels like the dirty mole you are. I don't know why I wrote that. And that's it. <laughs> Shit's super bare bones with the odd puzzle here and there. But yeah, it's not bad per se because it's a game geared towards children and that's cool, but fails to appeal to a more older demographic like myself. Don't get me wrong, it's a fun baby game. But after the first three worlds, I kind of got bored as hell with it because you never really get any new moves or an incentive to collect any of the other stuff around the levels. Speaking of which, Levels are structured as you expected. You got hub worlds with gates to the actual levels and then each level has four objectives that you can do as you please, with only one of which being mandatory to beat the level. However, the other objectives you have aren't too hard to beat and don't really stray off too much of the beaten path. Levels are pretty isolated and linear, with mostly being 3D with the odd 2D section here and there, with bonus rooms for you to collect more collectibles and more coins. Design wise, there's not much to go crazy for. They're pretty well designed but never give you too much of a challenge to go through. It's more of a chill, relaxing platformer with easy puzzles and easier collectibles. Each level has its own distinct charm in their own respective worlds, but then they do get kind of repetitive aesthetic-wise because most of the worlds are filled with about 5 to 4 levels and by the third one you're already like, okay, kinda wanna see some new stuff, you know? Like yeah, you get castles, cool, oh yeah, more castles, alright, oh now there's plants, alright, oh more plants, yeah, you get my point, they, it gets kinda boring. It's a fine game and levels aren't terrible, but don't really do anything new or mind-blowing to be praised about. It's an okay game. It's more of a game you play for the weekend and to just chill and relax and forget that the world is on fire. It's very reminiscent of classic 90s to early 2000s platformers and it's pretty fun in that regard. Collectibles are still really fun to get and just lets you chill. Just calm down, sit down, get a nice drink, just relax a little bit. It's the perfect Game Pass game and you can get on Game Pass, so you don't really have much to lose if you try to play this game. So definitely get that shit. This game fucking sucks. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> this game, this shit's actually pretty awesome. Honestly, having to play this wholesome game right after The Last of Us was like therapy <laughs> after going through war. Having no nostalgia for the game at all, and I never really ever watched Spongebob this game was actually awesome. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. It's a neat and enjoyable, relaxing game that, for someone that didn't really grow up watching The Sponge, felt like its writing was actually pretty funny and enjoyable and never felt like it was too childish or corny or cringy. Shit's pretty easy to beat too. It took me like two days and it's not too long. It still has loads of content. So let's fucking talk about it. Gameplay is what you expect. You are The Sponge and you're jumping around collecting spats and socks. And you're just out here manhandling robots and tikis and let me just tell you it's fun it's just pure fun combat isn't too bad and actually has you do something and think with your big brain with varied enemy types with their own way of taking them out other than just bopping them or smacking them you can ground pound shoot them up the ass blow some bubbles shoot some bubble missile things smack them with your bubbles you get the idea this is a lot of variety in combat for a 3d platformer collectibles are cool too and has a mario 64 approach with multiple spats around the levels, with each of them with their own objectives to get them. You also get shiny things, and yeah, that's their actual name, and they work as currency, allowing you to buy more spats from crabs or open otherwise locked areas. There's socks too, and you can collect them, which are a bit harder, but if you collect enough, you'll be able to trade them in for more spats. Yeah, there's a lot of spats, and I call them spats because, you know, I'm going to say spatulas a lot, so, and that's just too much work, so I'm just going to call them spats. You also got three playable characters, which is something I wasn't expecting, and has a lot of depth to it, surprisingly. You can be the sponge, which has his own moveset, and bubble abilities, which are pretty, pretty generic, pretty simple, not too complicated, it's really cool. Uh, Patrick, which can throw enemies and move objects, and has a bit of a belly dash. And the Squirrel Girl, which has her lasso that can swing on Texas things in the air. Okay. Some characters can only do specific spats and gain access to other areas that others can't. And speaking of these levels, 
Levels are pretty neat. Each have their own theme and never really feel too similar to another, with most of their own unique spat objectives, always introducing you to new mechanics and enemies. Environments or characters are all unique for the most part, and levels have their own distinct charm. I never got bored of any of the levels, because most of the levels are pretty open and have multiple objectives, and enemies to just fight through, and things to collect, and it was just all super fun. The sliding sections were though were the only thing I had an issue with. They were all kinda nah and sometimes just ridiculously hard. Not super hard, but just unfairly hard. They weren't impossible, but they were kind of fun sometimes. But this fucking one ah, can fucking burn. I swear to God, it, was, it took me so long and I hate it so much. But once I beat it, I felt so good. But man, they were kind of annoying. I really, really wish they, <laughs> they didn't they touch these up a little bit more. But yeah. Yeah, man, this game's pretty awesome. Unless you lack basic game knowledge, this game is really fun. And a really chill game that isn't too hard to beat and still has some challenge here and there with some unique enemies, environments, and funny dialogue here and there. It's definitely a nice wholesome game to just enjoy. And that's it. That's three 3D platformers that gave me so much hope for the future and for the return of the genre. There are obviously so much more out there and I'll leave a link down below that Twitter thread I mentioned earlier with a bunch of really cool looking 3D platformers that small developers are working on right now. I don't really have that much time to talk about these games either, they look, all I can say is that they look really cool, I haven't gotten a chance to play some of them, but they look awesome. And I'd love for you guys to check them out and support these amazing devs. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.